So today we return to a style of video first pioneered on this channel eight years ago, I know. Crazy, right? Uh, we are, of course, talking about affordable alternatives to iconic watches, and where better to restart this series than with a 2022 update for alternatives to the Amiga Speedmaster and the quintessential Moon Watch. Now, the rules are simple, as the title implies, it has to be more affordable, uh, also a non-homage, not that I have anything against homages, but something a little bit more original, and from a brand uh, with some good history behind the name. So let's get into it. Before we get into it, an important factor for you to remember when you're watching this video. Every single watch featured I have had personal experience with and I know intimately. Enough to recommend, obviously. That is extremely important when it comes to watches and especially recommending them. This channel is always and very much from a watch enthusiast's perspective. We are not a watch dealer, we are a truly independent channel. So don't forget to like this video, especially if you want to support free, independent channels like this. So today for my wristwatch check, yeah, it's the Squale 30 Atmos, my favorite watch. This is my limited edition TGV version. I have added the bracelet, which uh, came out quite recently. Yeah, I've discussed it before. It is a shame about those hollow end links, but the bracelet, the rest of the bracelet is pretty good, I have to say. At number seven, we have a recent reissue of a super clean, classic and tastefully balanced uni compacts chrono from Hamilton. This deeply 1960s style manual wind beauty comes in a variety of colors, the panda being my personal favorite. It immediately evokes the golden era of American muscle cars. I just look at this and I immediately think of Ford Mustangs, Pontiac GTOs, Dodge Chargers and so on. In fact, it would be right at home on Steve McQueen's wrist, far more than the wonderful Benrus field watch in that movie Bullet. But anyway, a video topic we have already covered. It's inspired by the 1969 Intramatic, only ever so slightly upscaled from 39mm to the current 40mm, along with all the modern materials you'd come to expect, like box sapphire, a gently aged faux patina, uh, which is super luminova, of course, and a super comfy but great Milanese mesh bracelet. You can save a few bucks and go with the strap option if you want. Inside is the redoubtable H51, which is a modified variant of the classic 7753. Basically what they've done is they've taken away the rotor and boosted the power reserve to 60 hours and made exclusively for Hamilton by the Swatch Group, which of course own ETA. One of the best things about this watch, aside from its retro elegant looks, is the 100 meter water resistance, making it not just sartorially versatile with its looks, but also situationally very capable too, and great for everyday wear. In terms of negatives, I would say the 14.3 millimeter height is a little bit tubby for my liking. I would have preferred it thinner, but this is typical for a chronograph, unfortunately. And at just over $2,000, I think it's fair in terms of value. So if this watch is so good, why haven't I reviewed it? Well, actually I was going to. Uh, sometimes with brands, they only allow you a certain amount of time with a watch. Unfortunately, I just ran out of time. However, I can say this, I do recommend it. I, I love Hamilton, I've owned many Hamiltons, and this particular one is excellent. So it definitely gets high marks and inclusion on this list. At six, we have a watch we recently reviewed on the channel, and it has to be one of the most versatile chronographs ever made. The highly underrated Swiss brand made history with the original Nevada Gretchen Chronomaster in 1963, as it was the first deliberately designed to be a do-it-all sports chronograph to handle land, sea, and air. Subsequently, it's loved by pilots, divers, and professionals of all fields, from business to the sciences, and it became a movie and TV star in its own right. I revisited the modern, almost period correct in size reissue, much like the previously discussed Hamilton, all the modern material upgrades are present, 
but this time powered by a choice of either manual wind or automatic selectors. The great thing is they give you a choice on the website. As I have already covered this watch with a dedicated video, I will spare you the details, but please do check out that review as it is absolutely pure class. What's important to note here is the stylish mid-century graceful handsome looks. You know, it really does feel period correct even though it's it's new. Uh it gives you that speedy feel but without being a um, you know a carbon copy it has its own identity has its own heritage it's an icon for the watch enthusiast the watch enthusiast in the know and beyond that the quality is exquisite and i think it is fairly priced and number 5 is perhaps the most uniquely unconventional and therefore unusual watch in the lineup citizen needs no introduction they are one of the world's biggest manufacturers of watches with a ton of rich history to their name Citizen did not invent the bullhead chrono. The brands that initially released them were in the 1960s and were actually Swiss, but the Japanese soon followed with more affordable options as they tend to do. The most successful of which was the Citizen in the early 1970s with the now legendary 8110. A recent resurgence of interest in the style peaked with the actor Brad Pitt when he wore one in the Tarantino directed movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. from 2019. One interesting bit of trivia from the film is that it's set in 1969, making the appearance of this watch actually an anachronism. But who cares? The whole movie is a big warm bath of overindulgent nostalgia anyway, and jolly good fun too. All the shooting. <laughs> I love that stuff, you know, the killing. A lot of killing. Anybody order fried sauerkraut? Obviously the name derives from the flanking pushes either side of the 12 o'clock crown which resembles the horns on a face designed specifically for racing car drivers so they could keep one hand on the wheel and operate the pushes more ergonomically. There have been countless reissues but the most recent EcoDrive powered Suno bullhead is perhaps the best yet. and typically found for an absolute steal under $500. Unlike its progenitors, it takes full advantage of the solar quartz technology. We are talking about EcoDrive of course and gives you a 1/5th of a second chronograph, alarm, tachometer. Also it's an instantaneously flyback chrono. There's a power reserve and a date with a choice of really interesting colors and very refreshing dial designs. The main negative here is their 45 mm diameter humongous size and they wear large as well. Uh, however, I I'm willing to forgive them because well they they're just so different. The angular shapes, the curves to the case, the dial work and the quality is always exceptional. The, the amount of refinement. I I've always said this in the past compared to their main rival Seiko, I think they're consistently better uh, in execution. Uh what else to say? Oh yeah, and they also have an impressive 200 meters water resistance which for a chronograph is very rare indeed. At number 4 is a vintage sweet spot and a watch very close to my heart. Yes, we are talking about the Breitling Navi timer. It simply would be wrong to leave it out. And again, I recently discussed this watch somewhat to death with a comparison and deep dive into the latest versions for 2022 versus my own current vintage Cosmonaut variation. So I will be brief here. But while it is unequivocally a pilot's watch and arguably the most iconic pilot's watch of all time, it can of course be used as a racing chrono thanks to the inclusion of a tachometer. Incidentally, the Speedmaster was originally intended as a racing watch and then became the NASA qualified tool for astronauts uh, that made history. So, why can't a Navi time have become a racing watch? Uh, why not? So, why is it so important that it must be on this list? Well, firstly, it came out before the Speedy first launching in 1954. but its genesis really was even earlier in the 1940s with the chronomat and from a brand that basically invented the modern chronograph watch as we know it it also beat the speedy into space on scott carpenter's wrist and earned an inimitable coolness few watches ever attain by being the watch of choice of miles davis herbie hancock and a whole host of other music icons 
as well as being in a James Bond movie. Check out the recent video for a more in-depth look. So as you saw in my latest Navi timer video, the new B01 equipped Navi timers are substantially more than a Speedmaster, but for half the price of a Speedmaster, you can go vintage and you can get a cosmonaut like mine for between three and four. You could definitely buy quartz vintage uh, Navi timers. There's a whole bunch of them. Maybe even an automatic for substantially less than a brand new Speedmaster. So that's why it is still my vintage sweet spot or vintage choice in today's video. Oh, Commander Bond. Call me James. Five days to Alaska. And number three, it's Seiko. What did you expect? Seiko have a history of involvement with sports timing and racing few brands can compete with. Not to mention collaborations with the world's most renowned car designer of all time, Giorgetto Giugiaro. I did a video all about their Speedmaster series, which in fact is two words and not one interestingly. Those watches were from the 1980s, the choice of Ert Senna before his Tag Heuer days, and immortalized in eternity by James Cameron in the epic Aliens movie via what's now known as the Ripley variation. I really feel Seiko does not get the credit they deserve when it comes to chronographs. I mean, look at the vast, varying different types they offer. You've got the Pogue, which famously went into space. You've got Grand Seiko Spring Drive chronographs on the luxury level. You have the Mighty Flighty, my beloved Flighty. You have, uh, what else? Uh, the Arnie. Okay, sure, it's Annie Digi, but it's still a chronograph in there. The Ripley and so on and so on. I mean, who has done that many different styles and types of chronographs? I struggle to think. Horologically speaking, there's no questioning the heritage and credentials of this choice. Seiko also pioneered the first analog quartz chronograph, further underlining the validity of their appropriately named 2021 Speed Timer Prospects release. It's a modern update of their 1969 original, but in a very clean and dare I say Daytona-esque look, especially the bezel and the compact V-shaped layout of the subdials. Interestingly, the stick hands are a nod to their mil-spec chronos of the 1980s, famously issued to the Royal Air Force, and also worn by James Bond. There's a pleasingly sporty selection of colour schemes to the more affordable Solar V192 based offerings over the more expensive limited editions, which are automatic and based on the calibre 8R46A. But my choice really is the Solar ones at just over $500, and being 39mm and the mechanical ones at 42mm, I think the scale works much better as well. It has an impressive 100 meters water resistance, curved sapphire glass, and if you really pay attention to the case, okay, at first glance, very Daytona-esque, but the case shape, it's almost tonneau-type shape, uh, not only is reminiscent of a lot of Seiko divers, but actually it reminds me of the Hamilton W10 military watches, uh, which gives it a very different feel on the wrist. Uh, a friend of mine owns this watch, and I, I have to say I was very impressed when I handled it. Uh, my only negative, and I kind of noticed it off the bat, was the poor orientation on the loom of the dial. It doesn't have that many loom markers, so orientation in low light does suffer. With all the hype on social media, which in my opinion gets a bit tiresome for Tudor recently, especially with the Black Bay GMT Pro and PXD Pelagos, at number two is a more underrated side of Tudor and their racing chronographs. In fact, for almost half a century, most memorably is their second generation, the 7100 series introduced in 1971, nicknamed the Monte Carlo. Its charming use of vibrant colors and harmonious dial layout gave it very much its own distinct identity and left a lasting impression among collectors. The prices of these vintage models fetch ducktails money these days. But fast forward to today and we see decades of evolution from the big block third generation that I once owned to the current ETA-based Heritage Monte Carlo inspired offerings of today. 
and then culminating in 2019 with a cross-pollination with the Black Bay chronographs. The emphasis at Tudor certainly has been Black Bay crazy. Uh, this year I was hoping for an update on the Monte Carlo and uh, I'd really like to see that MT5813 automatic in-house uh, calibre of theirs in a new Monte Carlo, but it didn't happen. Uh, we had more, <laughs> more Black Bays. There's more to life than Black Bays, I'm, I'm telling you. I, don't get me wrong, I love the Black Bay. The chronograph is great value for money. I mean, Cosk certified and several grands cheaper than a new Speedy. Still got to hand it to Tudor. May not be my favorite chronograph they ever did, but you get that new in-house movement. But for me, snowflake hands on the chronograph don't really work, that's just my opinion. But I had to put it in the list because, well, Tudor have that long, illustrious history of, of making chronographs. Let's see a new big block or let's see a new uh, Monte Carlo for next year, please, if you're listening well. Yeah, they don't listen to, uh, to me, but I mean, hopefully. They do listen to Hugo, though. That's why they put T-Rexes in their advertising. Very strange. Very strange. Wait, wait, what was that? Time. Go back a minute. You don't need to Landscape, water, plants, T-Rex. Time to head back home, maybe. What on earth so is going on? Your world. Boring takes time. Intruder. Born to dare. With dinosaurs. At number one, it can only be Fortis. This highly underrated Swiss brand is a true watch enthusiast's dream. Still independent to this day, with a history that spans over a century of innovation, from producing the first automatic watches, with British horologist John Harwood, to being the official choice of dozens of elite military air forces and space agencies around the world. It's a column wheel chronograph, we call it Berg 17, um, and that's the calibre actually we're going to send up, up to 30 kilometres, to test whether it's going to resist in space or not. While Amiga may endlessly exploit achievements in space that happened decades ago, Fortis today are still pushing ahead in new frontiers. So just in case you missed the millionth limited edition Snoopy Doopy Dark Side of the Moon ceramic, not ceramic, God knows, uh, swatch, moon phase, whatever, uh, they went to the moon, did you know? <laughs> This year, in 2022, they became the first watchmaker ever to successfully test their new Work 17, which is a column wheel based chronograph caliber in space. This was in order to understand the effects and rigors during an EVA or space flight. Everything has to be designed in a way that it will withstand those conditions and for a long time. So everything around the infrastructure which you need to provide to test these watches in space uh, need to withstand the, uh, the, the environment as well. So it is, a, it is a challenge. No other watch brand has ever done this, and certainly not to this scale. The fact that you can buy a watch with a movement actually tested in the stratosphere for less than a Speedmaster is an amazing value proposition, let alone a conversational piece. And if you actually are going into space, you can rest assured it's going to work. We will pass on the way quite low temperature regions, so up to or down to minus 50, 60 degrees. We are definitely in, in the conditions very close to space. The dial of the new Stratoliner itself is designed for the next generation of space travelers with loomed sections representing takeoff, release, re entry, and landing times. They are executed in a minimalist style with a very retro, chic, sci-fi aesthetic that makes me think of 2001, to be honest. Especially those sexy lugs. The Fortis as a brand rivals any of their Swiss luxury counterparts in quality, materials, heritage, performance and specification. At the end of the day, it's, is the watch coming back safely and did, is it still accurate? And I think that's the main point, you know. We're doing it for, for people you know, who travel that in the future, who go for space tourism like Virgin Galactic. Now, if you'd like to see the full documentary, I highly recommend having a look at the Fortis YouTube channel. You can see this quite amazing little mini documentary in its entirety. For those of you interested in space, engineering, and of course, horology, I highly recommend checking it out. I will leave a link in the description. So as you can imagine, testing your movements in space uh, there's not many of these watches about because, well, 
you have to send a balloon every time you test the, test the movement. Um, so I couldn't borrow one to review, but I can recommend them because Fortis is amazing. And you can still get a vintage one like mine in 38 millimeters with tachymeter on the uh, bezel uh, for less than the Speedy. I call mine the Speedy Killer with that legendary Le Magne 5100 movement. I've done millions of, not millions, but I've done a lot of videos about them, so have a look back. So you're probably wondering why I didn't want to highlight the Dan Henry 1962 that I proudly own. This very affordable $270 watch is mostly sold out now, and I also feel I've covered it to death, so hence its absence on the list. There is the Longines Heritage Chronos. These are ultra 1940s influenced and very stylish indeed. 40 millimeters, automatic, and feature a striking tuxedo dial and stunning blued hands that will have you lusting after an Art Deco Roadster just to match it. Great value at around three grand and really exude classy stealth old world luxury. Naturally, we could not make this list without giving a nod to a watch we have talked about a lot recently, hence its absence. But the Belova Lunar Pilot is utterly amazing and affordable too the only other chrono to be worn on the moon and famously took the place of the Speedy when the Amiga actually failed and the crystal popped off during an actual moon mission. If only the Lunar Pilot was 38 millimeters, I would own one quicker than a, I don't know, space shuttle rocket launch. <laughs> It'd be on my wrist right now. Lastly, there is the very inexpensive watch from Casio Edifice that I previously owned as well. The EF527D1AV is a highly functional quartz watch that can sometimes be picked up for under $100, and despite its deeply Navitimer-esque looks, it's from Casio's more premium subsidiary racing chronograph specialist, Edifice, which has sponsored many prestigious racing teams over the years. So there we are, there are my recommendations. Of course, uh, I could only mention a few, but uh, do share yours in the comments. Let's try and help out as many people as we can. Oh, and please don't forget to like this video. It's the best way to support the channel. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Onwards and upwards. Ciao.